Hello, thank you for joining me. We're going to be talking about Jira Service Management's incident management functionality powered by OpsGenome. I am Nick Nader. I am a solution engineer with ISOS Technology, who is an enterprise level platinum solution partner of Atlassian's. And we're going to jump right into the tool. This demo is going to start from the customer's perspective, the customer being someone who has just encountered a major incident that they would like to open up a ticket to resolve. The incident is with our billing application. So the customer has a few options here. They can either drill into one of our support desks and look at the service catalog to find the request they would like to open, or they can utilize the search bar and type in something like system problem. Typing into this search bar will not only search the service catalogs of all of our help desks, but also the Confluence knowledge base integration and those articles. As a customer, I can drill into this article and maybe resolve the incident that I'm having myself. If I can't resolve it myself, then I can always back up and open up one of our requests. For this one, I'm gonna open up a request called report a system problem since that's exactly what I'm encountering. And if we drill into this request form, we'll see several different required and optional fields that I can fill out. We'll add a summary to the incident I'm having. And we'll say, I cannot access our billing portal. We'll see that the summary field also searches those knowledge base articles in case we miss them the first time around. We can then add some description to the incident. And then right below that, we can add additional optional fields. This one is in our affected services, and it's actually populated by our service registry on the internal side of this JSM project. And we can see that the internal billing application is one of those services we support. You can also have insight asset management fields here. So all of the billing applications that we support within this help desk are all listed and up to date in this nice dropdown. We can select internal billing application as the business application we're having issues with as well. And then we can select an issue impact for this incident. We'll mark it as significant large and an urgency that we're matching as high. We can then send in this request. And what we'll see here is the external customer view of that open request. Here we'll see all the details we just entered into that form. Right below that, we'll see a full activity stream of anything that happens on that request, whether that be transitioning through the ticket's life cycle or just communication and comments from that internal agent. As a customer, I can add my own comments and communicate with that agent from here as well. I can attach things as well as pictures, and I've got a full HTML editor to use. Over on the right-hand side, we'll see additional details about the request, including the status that it's currently in, as well as some actionable buttons like turning on and off notifications or sharing this out with other people that have access to the help desk. All of the requests that I open in this external portal are populated down in this drop down up in the top right. So we can always drill back into our past incidents or find all of the currently open tickets that we have. This customer experience is very customizable and we can always manipulate this portal to be easier and more intuitive for our users. Now to jump to the internal side of the tool and the agent's perspective when handling these incoming incidents, we'll see that live landing page here in our Jira instance. This is subjective to the currently logged in user. And as you can see, I'm seeing recent projects that I have currently worked on, as well as all of the issues that I've currently worked on that are assigned to me or maybe favorited. We can also utilize the dashboarding functionality. We're gonna jump over to our IT operations dashboard here. And this gives us a nice bird's eye overview of everything happening in our IT operations help desk project. As you can see, we have a variety of gadgets here that show charts and graphics of all the information in that project. But what we're concerned with right now are the currently open incidents within that project. We can drill into this widget of all of our currently open incidents and it'll open up a JIRA issue filter. We can see that this is the current incident that we just opened from the customer's perspective. And this is actually the internal issue view that all agents will see when they're opening up incidents. All of the details around that incident that were entered into the form is in this main section here. As we can see, the affected service from our service registry we connected is right here, as well as that insight asset management object. We can actually drill into the insight object from here and see all the details related to that billing application. 
Over on the right-hand side, we have a few details about the incident itself. These are all internal fields that only our agents can see. This being the current status that the incident is, is in, we can then transition this through its workflow since we're currently working on it. We'll simply hit work in progress, and this will pop up a quick screen so that we can assign it either to ourselves or to another agent. We'll select ourselves since we're the one investigating this incident and hit investigate. As you can see, we have SLA goals automatically counting down for time to first response and time to resolution here, which is an exclusive Jira service management functionality. Down below here, we'll see the knowledge base articles that were surfaced from that customer portal as well. The knowledge base being not only an external resource for those customers, but also an internal resource for all of our agents to reference, whether that be change management documentation or like we're observing here, incident management documentation. We can see that the business application access issues is actually a document we have, and it sounds related to our billing portal access. So we'll drill into that and see if there's actually a known solution for this incident. This will open up the article within our Jira instance. And as we can see here, we do have a solution for that incident. It looks like it has to do with editing a Bitbucket access control list, which is something that our developers do. As an agent of our Jira service management help desk, I don't have access to the Jira software projects, but what I can do is I can link our original incident issue over to a software project where our developers can then work on it within their own process and their own project configuration. To do that, I simply hit the link issue button here at the top of the issue view, and it'll start populating that link issue section. I hit create linked issue from here, and then I simply select the project I would like to create that linked issue within. We'll select the Ecom platform dev project, and then we'll select the issue type of the issue we'd like to create. We'll make it a story over in that dev project. We can then create a relationship between the two issues, and we'll say that the issue we're creating in the software project is actually blocking the originating incident from our JSM project. We can add more details and then simply hit create. Down here in the linked issues view, after we've created that symbolic link, we can see that linked issue from our software project, as well as some details related to it, like the priority and the status it's currently in. Now to switch over to the developer perspective, we can jump over into that software project here in our Jira instance and view that issue that we just created within that software project. Here we'll see the hard link over back to our originating issue in our service management project, as well as all of the details that were attached to it. As a developer, I can then start my work on this incident, move the workflow through its work stages into in progress. And right below that, we can actually view the development panel. And since this software project is connected to our development tools, such as Bitbucket, we actually already have a Bitbucket repository attached to this software project. We can then simply create a branch straight in that Bitbucket project. And if we hit the create branch button, it'll populate a feature branch over in our Bitbucket repository. We're branching that off, or, off of the master branch and the feature branch name is actually auto-populated with the issue key as well as part of the issue summary. The issue key is super important here because it will actually create a hard link between the Bitbucket branch and that Jira issue. That way developers that are working out of Bitbucket can stay within the Bitbucket tool and see everything happening on that Jira issue. Once we create this branch, we'll see a nice branch view within our Bitbucket repository. And as a developer, I can then drill into the source code of this branch, change that access control list file that I need to, and then start deploying it to our Bitbucket pipelines. If we jump back to our originating issue from the software project and quickly hit refresh, we'll see that the, the development panel over on the right-hand side now has additional information around that branch we created as well as the build within the Bitbucket pipeline. We can drill into these development details and see everything related to that branch we created. We can create pull requests from here, see all the commits, as well as see the status of that build that's going through the Bitbucket pipeline. Once all of our development work is complete, we can of course then transition our workflow to the done status. And with some automation rules that we've created on the back end, we actually synchronize the status of our linked issues. So as our developer is complete, has completed their work over in their software project, the originating issue in our Jira service management project 
we'll also transition its status into completed. If we drill into that originating issue, we'll see that it's now in a completed state and we've met our SLA goals. And once we've solved that incident, as an agent, I wanna drill into all of our open incidents that we currently have in our IT operations service project. So we'll drill into our incidents queue over here and see that we have a lot of open current incidents. Scrolling through the summaries of these incidents, I see a lot of things concerning our web store. And maybe I wanna escalate a lot of these incidents into a major incident. To do that, I simply select the incidents I would like to link up to a major incident and then hit the link to major incident button in the top. Here we can name our new major incident like web store access problems. We simply hit the create new major incident button. And then we attach one of those services from our service registry to the major incident itself. This one has to do with our online web store. So that's the service that we'll be selecting. Then we can add some incident description as well as a priority and a severity of that incident. We then simply hit create major incident. The JSM platform will then link all of those incidents and underlying tickets to that major incident we just created and put into our major incidents queue down here in the bottom left. We can click on our ongoing major incidents queue and view all of those major ongoing incidents. From here, we can drill into this major incident which will actually open up our Ops Genie instance that is connected to our JSM product. Over here, we'll see an incident view in our Ops Genie instance that's connected to our JSM project. We'll see that connected impacted service as well as the originating Jira service management requests that we've linked to the major incident. From here, a developer or anyone that handles those major incidents on our incident response team can quickly hit the investigate button to drill into some of the development work that has happened on the related service. It looks like our online web store services had some re recent deployments. We can drill into those deployments, drill into the commits of those deployments and see if the code may be a potential cause of that major incident. If we think that one of the commits is a major cause, we can then select that commit or maybe several commits and add those as potential causes onto our major incident. This will then populate the incident's potential cause section, and we'll be able to drill into that source code to make sure that we don't create that incident again. Now over on the right-hand side, we have a whole section for communication around that major incident. At the top here, we can quickly throw together a conference room for that major incident. This is something that connects to several different voice platforms. So whether you use things like Zoom, or you just wanna use OpsGene's hosted bridge, we can hit incident management conference center here, choose a room to create that incident command center in, and then hit start. Now everybody that is part of that incident response team will get a quick message saying that they can join this room. We can then enter that session and quickly start communicating over that major incident and start resolving those issues. Jumping back to our incident view here, right below that incident command center, we actually have incident status updates. This will allow us to send out a mass update to all of the stakeholders that are concerned with this particularly impacted service. So all of our stakeholders that are concerned with the our online web store can quickly get updates about how we're handling this incident. We can then say we are quickly resolving this and give them additional details. Sending out this will of course notify all of them via email and within the OpsGene app and they'll be able to see everything that goes on with the incident. As we take all these actions on our incident and communicate over it, we'll see that the timeline over here on our right-hand side populates with all of those actions that we've just taken. Right below those status updates is a Slack channel that we can quickly create over the major incident. We have a connected Slack instance. So by simply hitting create Slack channel and naming that channel, we can throw together a Slack channel specifically for this major incident. We'll name that something like web store access issues. Now that quickly threw together a Slack channel specifically for our web store access issues. And as we can see here, Ops Genie automatically pushes different status updates about that major incident and all the information regarding it.
including that ICC session that we just created using the Ops Genie hosted bridge. Now, once we've taken all the actions to resolve our major incident, we can change the status from open to a resolved state. That'll of course kick off more Slack notifications. And within our Slack channel, we'll see that it's now moved into a resolved state and we don't need to worry about that incident anymore. After, after incidents happen, we of course wanna document what we did to solve that incident and what caused it, caused it in the first place. In order to do that, we wanna create a post-mortem. We'll quickly refresh our incident view here and we'll see that the post-mortem now is at the top of the page. The post-mortem also com comes with the post-incident analysis report. This is automatically generated by Ops Genie and has a lot of live metrics around how we did resolving the incident. To create a post-mortem, we simply hit create post-mortem and this will take us over into the analytics section of the Ops Genie instance. Here we have a pre-templated post-mortem report where we can fill out all the details that we took to resolve the incident, some root causes, as well as maybe some lessons learned. Over here on the right-hand side, we have all the details regarding that incident, as well as that full timeline of activity that happened against that incident. Down here in our attachment section, we'll see that post-incident report being populated and once we're done filling out all these details, we can publish this into our Confluence instance. Once it's in the published status, we simply hit export to Confluence and then select the space we would like to put this in within our Confluence instance. We'll select that IT operation space and then export this over to it. Once your postmortem has been exported to Confluence, we can go view it within our Confluence instance. Here within our IT operations Confluence space, we have all that documentation ranging from external customer documentation that we saw originally in the customer portal to that internal agent documentation that we use to help solve our issue. We have a whole section here for our postmortem reports. And if we drill into some of our past major incident postmortems, we can see that we have several different postmortems and we can look at back into the historical data around those major incidents. Thank you for joining me and learning about the Jira Service Management Incident Management functionality. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to email me at the address you see on the screen or jump over to Atlassian's website and see all of the features that come along with Jira Service Management. Thank you.